Freedom Church. Last week, we were in 1 Peter chapter 3, and with the help of my mate Rory and me reading 1 Peter chapter 3 again this week, I I found a couple of verses in the very same chapter that have challenged me greatly. And I trust today that wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, that you too are going to be greatly encouraged. And, And so as we pick up just these couple of verses from 1 Peter chapter 3, Peter's dealt with citizenship, he's dealt with husbands, he's spoken about husbands and wives, he's spoken about submitting to authority, he's spoken about employment, and now he says this, he says, finally, all of you live in harmony with one another, or be united, be sympathetic. Just this week, I went to visit a couple in our church She's been unemployed now for months with one of the major airlines. And they phoned her this week just to say, sorry, we're cutting your medical aid. No more medical aid. And, and as I spent some time with them at their home in Faramir, they shared with me that every time they cook a meal, they just make a bit extra for somebody else in need, for, for someone else going through a tough time. And they say they're able to just help somebody else with a meal, who's going through a tough time. I want to say to many, many, many of you in our church, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because with your help, we've been able to support and come alongside many families in our community, many families who are going through a tough time. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. Peter says this, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing. Because to this we were called, to this we called, guys, so that you may inherit the blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek and pursue peace. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you're eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their fear. Do not fear their, their fear. Freedom Church, do not be frightened. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. It's an incredible piece of scripture that's written to the church. It's written to you and I. And I want to take out four things. There are my fingers. Just four things out these couple verses. The first one is learn to drive the new car. The second one is learn the new language. The third point, learn the target. And the last point, learn the Bible. Let's talk about the first point today. Learn to drive the new car. One of my mates has got a new car. He's swapped cars with his wife because his car is a fuel guzzler. It costs 30 rand just to pull off from the robot. So he's given his wife the fuel guzzler just to take the kids to school and back. And he's taken her car that drives on fumes, very light on petrol to drive on the highway to work and back. And he says to me, he's getting so irritated because he's driving on the highway. And when people cut in front of him, he wants to flash his lights at them with a switch behind the steering wheel. He wants to flash his lights at them. And he says every time he grabs that switch to flash his lights at them, it's the wrong switch. Because his, in his car was on the right, and now his wife's switch on the right-hand side is to wet the windscreen. And he gets even more irritated because the car's nice and clean. Now he's putting water all over the windscreen. And I thought about this story. Friends, this is exactly what Peter's saying to you and I. He says, you're in a new car now. You're driving a new vehicle. This new vehicle of Christianity. And we've got to learn how to use the switch and the lever in this new car. There's a new value system that we have. He says, guys, the first thing you've got to do is live in harmony with one another. We've got to learn how this new car works. We've got to learn how this vehicle of Christianity really works. 
Instead of flashing our lights at people, we've got to pour water. There's got to be unity. There's got to be sympathy. There's got to be compassion. There's got to be humility. And you know the best way to describe humility is to have an honest assessment of yourself and have an honest assessment of Jesus Christ. We've got to make sure that inside the church, friends, there is no superiority. Inside the church, there's no inferiority. The whole of society is is judged on inferiority and and superiority. What car do you drive? Where did you go to school? What, What house do you live in? And Peter's saying, guys, if you want to stand during these times under pressure, these are the instruction manuals of the car. This is how the vehicle of Christianity works. Sympathy, compassion, humility, unity. And friends, while we're under pressure, while we're living in these very peculiar times, if we live and drive in this vehicle of Christianity, people are going to take their direction off of us as we point them to Jesus. Completely different way of living to the world. You just got to drive your car to work and back. You just got to ride your bicycle or, or go for a walk around the block. There's so much anger out there. Guys, we've got to find peace in our hearts. The second thing that Peter talks about is learning a new language. And when I thought about this, I thought about my friend many, many, many years ago, a friend of mine who taught me how to race bicycles. Him and his wife, many years ago, they used to go to the Italian school in Johannesburg every single Thursday night. They used to drive through after work. Why? Because they wanted to learn a new language. They wanted to learn how to speak Italian. He says to me it was extremely difficult because you're thinking in this way about saying something like this. Now you've got to change your, your way of thinking. You've got to think differently as you learn to speak a new language. But, but my friend and his wife, they had a dream. They had a goal. They wanted to learn a new language because they wanted to buy a house in Italy in a little town called Luca. They've got the house there. They can speak fluent Italian now. They're still in South Africa, but their goal, their dream, one day, is to go and live in Italy. And when I thought about this friend of mine learning a new language, I thought about us as Christians. You know what, guys? Freedom Church, we've got to learn a new language. I want to show you a video. On Wednesday afternoon, one of my teammates, who's not scared to wear a t-shirt in the middle of winter and stand with a microphone in a field, him and the rest of the team filmed this incredible video. And we want to show you this video. It's something that depicts our words that we speak out, feathers that get put out, and as the wind takes those feathers and blows them across the field, it's exactly the same as our words. Once those words are out of our mouths, once that language that we speak gets spoken, we cannot take those words back. The wind, the forces, the the company that we keep, take those words. And there's nothing that we can do to take those words back. We've got no control, none whatsoever, over the words that we speak, just like these feathers that you're going to see. Let's have a look at that video. It's proper. Thanks to Pete and the team for spending hours around editing that video. But it's incredible, hey, friends, just to have a look at that piece of land that we'll share with you about in a couple of weeks' time. Once those words get spoken, once those feathers get let loose, You've got no control over your words, friends. Be careful, friends, about the language that we're using. We've got to learn how to speak a new language. Uh, Peter's saying if you want to stand firm under these tough times, you've got to learn a new language, and this is the language. Not a language of insult, a language of blessing. That's the language that we've got to learn to speak. Friends, you know what? Insult comes naturally to us. Well, well let me rephrase that. Insult comes naturally to me. Uh, just this week, I had to apologize to two of my mates for, for insulting somebody and speaking badly about someone. Blessing is a learning language. Like those friends of mine that had to learn to speak Italian, it, it doesn't come naturally. It, it takes time. Insult, of course, is, is the natural language of a sinful man. Blessing 
is a learning language. Let's start practicing, friends, how to speak a new language. Because one day, just like my friend and his wife, going to go and move to Italy. We too, as Christians, are going to move and we're going to relocate to heaven where we will speak a new language. We've got to learn how to bless people. Instead of insult, instead of flashing your lights, pour water and bless. And, and these are some of the blessings. I looked at Numbers chapter 6. It says, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how they must bless the people of Israel. This is how you to bless that person who you want to flash your lights at on the highway. Who you want to insult, Daryl, that sandpaper person, my boy. This is how you to bless people. It says in number six, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Lord, keep Freedom Church strong. God, keep them healthy. Father, keep them humble. Lord, keep them counting for you. Keep them employed, God. Keep them moving forward, God. Keep them gentle. Keep them humble, God. Keep them generous. Keep them kind, Lord God. And then it goes on. It says, the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Think of your kids. When you're rushing from work to go and watch them take part in a sporting event. And you get there, and as they see you, as they see your face on the side of the field shouting and encouraging them, something happens, something grips your kids in their hearts when they see their dad or their mom watching them. May the Lord's face shine upon you, Freedom Church, and be gracious to you. May the Lord's face turn towards you and give you peace. A language of blessing doesn't come naturally. We need to learn a new language of blessing. And friends, if we're going to take Peter's advice, then we've got to carefully manage our language at this time. You, you know, after that video was filmed on Wednesday, the team gathered in a circle around those feathers, and we prayed that words of life would be spoken from that piece of land. We prayed that the gospel would be preached, and, and that hearts would be soft when people came to church on that piece of land one day. We prayed pray, prayers of blessing upon you. We prayed prayers of blessing upon your families. You, this world is so quick to send out words of cursing and, and words of deceit and words of gossip. And we've got absolutely no control over those feathers, over those words once they've left our mouths. But if we turn from an angry, gossiping, critical community that uses language and we start using language of blessing, I believe we're going to attract the presence of God in an incredible way in our community. That's number two. Learn a new language. Third point today. The third thing that we have to learn is the target. What's the target? It says here, remember it says, you must seek and pursue peace. Seek and pursue peace. Peace is the target, friends. We've got to seek and pursue the target, which is peace. And I don't need to tell you that, that we live in a very social media, a very alive, active world where social media is just crazy. If I had to ask you and put a picture of a number plate up on, on the screen, too fast for you, Western province. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. There was this lady driving her car in Cape Town with the number plate, too fast for you. Western province, and, and she ended up driving her car into a parking lot, into a shopping center, driving her car straight into a restaurant. And, and of course, social media instantly started ripping this woman to pieces on social media. And, and I thought about who this lady was. I, I went and did some research, wondering what was behind this whole story about this lady crashing her car into a restaurant. 69-year-old lady, successful businesswoman from Johannesburg, has a house in Cape Town in Hart Bay. I thought, you know, that could be my mom. 
My mom's a bit older than her. My mom also drives an automatic car. And this lady, Erica Holt, says as she drove in, she looked and on the passenger seat with 30 eggs on the seat and, and her foot slipped off the brake onto the accelerator automatic car just like my mom's. I thought it could have been my mom. Friends, there's a story behind circumstances and situations in people's lives. And often we don't know about those situations. Often we just assume and start ripping people to pieces, start slating them on social media. Peter says, my job and your job is to bring peace. Every time I send an SMS or a WhatsApp, every time we respond to an email, every time we respond to a situation, we've got to ask ourselves this question. Is it going to cause war or is it going to bring peace? And I watch my kids on their phones and I watch myself almost responding to some WhatsApp groups on some WhatsApp groups that I'm, that I'm on, some, some, some chats. Choose war, choose peace. When you're sitting around a dining room table with family, maybe a strained relationship, aim for peace. When you're sitting with your work colleagues, aim for peace. When you're with your mates and the jokes are flying around, and suddenly you're tempted to just make one joke that's just a little bit too far, Aim for peace. When you're talking about somebody not present, Daryl, aim for peace. Learn the target. Aim for peace. And so we are learning. I'm learning. Learn with me, friends, the way of Christianity. It's not easy. It doesn't come naturally. But the closer we walk with Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the easier it becomes. And finally, as we close, this is the fourth point today. It says, do not fear their fear. Do not fear their fear. Do not be frightened. If you go to the bottom of your page in your Bible there, you'll have a look. There's a verse that, that correlates to that from Isaiah chapter 12. So we know Peter, when he's writing 1 and 2 Peter, he's busy reading Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12. And, and he's taken something from Isaiah chapter 8. We've got to understand, why is Peter telling us, do not fear their fear? Why is Peter saying, Freedom Church, don't be frightened? Because he's discovered something here from Isaiah chapter 8. Uh, people are asking me, Daryl, how are you doing? Daryl, you okay? What's happening? Well, uh, we, we can't meet as a church right now. I'm trying to look after the family at Freedom Church as best we can. I've got a family of my own and I've got all sorts of things going on. And, and people say to me, are you frightened? Sometimes I'm petrified. But I'm learning the book. I'm reading the Bible. I'm getting to understand the instruction manual for life. And the more I learn the book, the more courage I get. And so I want to encourage you, friends. When you find a little scripture like I found this week in, in one Peter chapter 3, we've got to go back and read the whole story behind it, the context from where it comes from. You don't have to go and read the whole book of Isaiah, don't worry. Just go and read Isaiah chapter 7 from there. There's this king in Jerusalem. Everyone's ganging up against Jerusalem. And this is what it says. The king was so frightened, he was like a leaf in the forest that was shaking. He's petrified. And then God says to Isaiah, go to the king and say this to him. Remember the king shaking like a leaf in the forest, eh? He says, go and tell the king this. Be careful. Be calm. Don't be afraid. Don't lose heart. Friends, be careful. Be calm. Don't be afraid. Don't lose heart. And then it says a little bit later, because there's opposition, opposition against the king. It says this, if you do not stand firm in your faith, you do not stand firm at all. Freedom Church, while everyone is shaking like a leaf in the forest, be careful. Be calm. Don't be afraid. Don't lose heart. We will stand. How? By faith. Four things, friends, that I believe are going to help us at this time. Learn the vehicle. 
Know the vehicle of Christianity. When you want to flash your lights, pour water. Bring unity and sympathy and compassion. Brotherly kindness. Don't think of competition. Don't think in terms of selfishness. Think in terms of community. Number two, learn the language. Never forget that video on our land that God gave us with those feathers. Learn the language. Young people, I want to say your future is determined. It's dependent on your language, those words, those feathers that you speak. Once your feathers, once your words are out, you can never get those back. Learn the language of blessing and not insult. Number three, learn the target. What's the target? Peace. Bring peace. Not war. Not division. Not insulting. Bring peace. And finally, learn the Bible. Because when we shake like a leaf in the forest, knowing truth helps you to stand firm. Stand firm, Freedom Church. In Jesus' name, amen.